Welcome to another episode of Umineko Nanakukur Koroni. I swear every week that becomes harder to pronounce for some reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, I hope you're all having a good day so far, and uh, yeah. Last week was one hell of an episode. Um, there was magic, more magic, there was a big, big fight. And we gained a new ally in the form of uh, the witch, Virgilia. And, um, yeah, it's, it, it's a whole... <laughs> We're off to a, a, a start. Um, thank you, Anne, for the bits. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, this episode's going to be really fun, I think. I didn't actually, uh, normally I read ahead a little bit to see what we're, like, in for. I forgot to do that this time, but if I recall correctly, we're, we're getting, like, big allure today. Big, like, big stuff's gonna happen. And it's gonna be great. And, um, yeah. Let's just dive right in, I guess. Oh, we are diving right in. Holy shit. Right, okay, so, um, where we left off, and I'm also using this as an opportunity to check my audio levels, um, this is a fairly loud song. If it's not loud enough, or if it needs to be turned down, please let me know. Um, and then I'll adjust it. Um, last time we discovered that uh, all of the servants are dead. They have all been murdered overnight uh, as part of the first twilight together with Kinzo, the head of the family. And Battler wasn't super interested in checking out the crime scene and figuring out what happened at first. Um, <laughs> it was a beautiful cliffhanger um, because he, thanks to Virgilia, has gotten fired up and is ready to take on the witch. And that's what we're about to do. Let's begin with the reconstruction of the... <laughs> I'm gonna do a retake on that. Let's begin with the reconstruction of the crime scene. Virgilia, quickly, please. The first corpse discovered was Shannon's. She was found in the parlor on the first floor of the mansion. The door and windows were locked and a closed room was established. Beato, I need some details. Let's reconfirm the definition of a closed room. Indeed. The term closed room refers to a room where the inside and the outside are completely cut off from each other. Naturally, it will be impossible to even affect things across that boundary line, much less enter or escape from it, across it. This includes an all-inclusive denial of the existence of hidden doors, as well as all possibility of intervention from the outside. Henceforth, this shall be referred to as Beatrice's closed room definitions. Let's focus in a bit. Let's focus in a bit, I should say. Oof. Reading is hard, y'all. How do you define all possibility of intervention from the outside? I refer to all types of direct intervention from the outside, such as using a fishing line or a long, thin rod. In conclusion, there are no gaps in the doors and windows through which such tricks will work. I wonder about that. Even if there wasn't a gap, you should be able to interfere with radio waves, like with a remote control, right? <laughs> Very well. I'll add to this definition that interference due to radio waves and related methods of remote control shall be impossible. There's also an extension telephone in the parlor. A device connected to that wouldn't count as remote control, right? The phones are already unusable, are they not? <sighs> Whatever. I'll include that too. All direct and indirect methods of interfering with the inside of the closed room from the outside of the room are impossible. What about a voice or a knock? 
Those should be able to interfere from the outside without someone entering the room, right? Even though it's a closed room, it probably isn't impossible for someone to knock or call out. The closed room definition does not cover whether transmission of intent across the boundary is possible or not. In other words, you can't make it so your definition includes the blockage of all methods of commu communication with the outside. That is indeed the case. Understood. So, Shannon Chan's parlor satisfies Beatrice's closed room defen definition, right? Correct. Closed room definition? Understood. Continue, Virgilia. Yes. Shannon's corpse was in possession of one master key. The relatives who discovered her collected this. Beato, repeat it. How many master keys this time? <laughs> the same as last time. There are five, one for each servant. Which means this still isn't a closed room. There are still four master keys left. It just means that after Shannon Chan was murdered, one of the other four keys locked it. Correct. And it wasn't only a master key that was found. Yes. Alongside the corpse, there was a western en envelope with the family crest. Instead of a letter, the key to a guest room on the second floor was inside it. The key to a second floor guest room. The only key other than the master key that can open the door to that second floor guest room. Is that definition correct? Indeed, there is no problem. And, unlike the master keys, only one of those exists. In other words, apart from the five master keys, there will be only one key that can unlock certain rooms. In other words, this is a message telling them to go to the second floor guest room next. So the adults move to the second floor guest room, right? Yes. The door to the second floor guest room was locked, and a magic circle was drawn on it. The relatives unlocked it with the key they had found near Shannon's corpse. Inside, Kumasawa's corpse was discovered. It was a closed room. One that satisfied Beatrice's closed room definition. Kumasawa was in possession of one master key. The relatives collected this. And like in Shannon's case, there was a western envelope discovered alongside her. Inside was the key to the third floor waiting room. The relatives moved to the third floor waiting room. So, there was a magic circle on the door to the third floor waiting room, and that door was locked? Yes. Inside the door, uh, inside the room, Goda's corpse was discovered. The room was a closed room. One that satisfied Beatrice's closed room definition. Goda was in possession of one master key. The relatives collected this. And, like up until now, a western envelope with the family seal was discovered, inside of which was the key to the second floor VIP room. The relatives moved to the second floor VIP room. <laughs> What's going on here? What are you planning? <laughs> There's no need to glare, is there? It may be a closed room, but there are still multiple master keys that can open it, correct? And beside the master keys, I've even given you keys specific to each room. I don't like where this is going. But I'm starting to see how it'll turn out. So it continues like this for all six people. Yes, that is correct. Inside, this, inside the second floor VIP room, Genji's corpse was discovered. One master key was collected. The key to the under, underground boiler room was discovered. They moved to the underground boiler room. Inside the underground boiler room, Kinzo's corpse was discovered. The key to the chapel was discovered. They moved to the chapel. Inside the chapel, Kanon's corpse was discovered. One master key was collected. The key to the first floor parlor was discovered. With this, our reconstruction of how all six corpses were discovered is complete. An addendum. 
Along with the key to the chapel, a letter was enclosed in the western envelope found near Kinzo's corpse. The contents of the letter were as you saw. It fur further urged the relatives to solve the riddle of the epitaph. And yet, in that case, what's going on? If the last place where Kanon was had the key to the very first room, the parlor where Shannon was, that makes six closed rooms all tied together, right? That is correct. The six closed rooms are all tied together. The keys to unlock each one are all shut up inside the next room. In other words, the six closed rooms form one massive closed room. And all of the master keys as well as the individual room keys are shut up inside it. Furthermore, all of the doors and windows on the six rooms are normal. No device exists which can lock them without a key, such as an auto-lock. <laughs> what do you think? It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Once again, milady, that is not dignified. When Ronovic rebuked her, Beato stuck her tongue at him without showing any signs of shame. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Playing with Battler just put me into such a good mood. <laughs> so, Battler, what do you think of my mood? If you can't think of anything in particular, I wouldn't mind showing you how I made the goats carry the corpses. And seal all of the rooms with magic, okay? <sighs> do what you want. I'll listen respectfully to this magic theory that you claim is true. However, I can claim my human theory, even though it's completely different from yours without any interference from your claim. In other words, there's no need for me to pay attention to your bullshit. Go ahead and show me how you can log the room with your multicolored magic simply by waving your magic staff. Just like those guys with their toad oil and all-purpose kitchen knives. Virgilia, let's reconstruct the crime scene. Search for a weakness. Were they all definitely dead? If one of them is just playing dead, this isn't a closed room at all. Nanjo confirmed that all of them were dead. However, due to the devil's proof, it is impossible to deny the possibility of a wrong diagnosis. In other words, that child cannot make the likelihood that Nanjo overlooked them being, e being alive equal to zero. Here it is, that devil's proof. But there exists a sword that can carve that up. What's up with them? Looks like they're having a good time leaving me out of the discussion. I'm his opponent, am I not? Doesn't he have any time to spare for me? Fundamentally speaking, communication with one's opponent is not necessary for, to the act of competing in chess. And every time you've communicated with him outside of making your moves, You've used that opportunity to, to confuse him. Perhaps this is the result of him not wanting to be led astray. For some reason, I, I don't like it. You are challenging him to a chess match, are you not? That's true, but... Ugh. Beatrice puffed out her cheeks, as though, as though to say, I don't know why, but I don't like it. Hmm. No further comment. Because the police have not yet arrived at the crime scene, the human side the human side's ability to, to inspect the scene is limited. For a strict confirmation of death, I recommend that you have that child repeated in red. Okay, that's where I'll strike. Repeat it. The six victims are all dead. Hello, Chunanum. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Uh, if you're new to this series, um, we are very far into it, so uh, please be aware of that. Because it's very long, it's very impossible for me to recap it at this point. But uh, welcome, and uh, also that reminds me... I'm taking a... Oh, you found my YouTube? Awesome. I... Welcome, welcome. Um, for anyone else who's new here, and just as a reminder for everyone who's been along for the ride, 
a uh, little content warning. Uh, specifically, child abuse, character deaths, detailed descriptions of gore and body horror, mentions of suicide, misogyny, and our protagonist is a teenage boy, so he's a little skeevy sometimes. And that should be, uh, that should cover all that. I'm gonna turn my own audio down real quick a little bit. I, uh, oh, you have? Awesome. I've, I, uh, I don't get to talk to people who, other people who've played the games or read the games very often. So that's awesome. Um, I'm taking a quick break also for some water. Uh, I say water, but I mean tea. Also, congrats on the new emote, and because uh, that one's specifically for bits. I hope you like it. Um, yeah. I'm very, very amped up today. I need to calm down a little. Whew, okay. We're good, we're good. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I just love this series so much that I'm always really happy when it's Wednesday. Um, Chris is... Wednesday's just... usually there's a lot of fun stuff to do, but also... for me specifically. <laughs> and also I get to stream. I get to read more Umin Echo. I get to talk to all of you and hang out. It's great. I love it. And it I'm glad you think that the emotes are cute. Awesome. I worked, uh, I did my best to make them really cute, and, uh... Umineko's your favorite piece of fiction? Honestly, mine too. Seriously. Like... I was already very much, like, in love with it, and rereading it, and kind of sharing that experience with other people has made me fall in love with it all over again. I just, it's so good. And, and there's so many different ways to look at it, and mm, love it. But yeah, welcome. Um, very happy to have have you here. Uh, okay, first of all, your theories are not dumbass, because your other theory, there was a lot to that. That was very like big brain of you, and um, I, I again, I love reading theories. I love it. And, uh, you know, even at the end of this, we're not gonna have all the answers, most likely. There will still be stuff to theorize, and I can't wait until we get to that point so I can hear all about it. I'm gonna take a few deep breaths so that my hype evens out a little and I don't crash later. <laughs> okay. Um, before I continue, a fun little thing to share. Uh, It's true, no Umi theories are dumb. Um, I'm working on a little rejigging, re-rigging, I should say that's the official word, um, of the reader. And um, hopefully he's gonna look a lot better and have a lot more like movement to him because he's a bit um, static compared to my other avatar. Uh, it'll take a couple of weeks. It's a lot of work, but I'm working on it. And I uh, can't wait until I can show them off to you all. <laughs> I, I think I've said it this Ed, before also, but don't worry about the typos too much. Everybody makes them. In, in this house, we appreciate a good typo now and then. And on that weird note... Milady, he has told you to repeat something in red, has he not? Hey, enough lazing around. Do you refuse to repeat it? This is where our battle starts. Huh? Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, that's fine, I'll answer. These six are all dead. Kinzo, Genji, Shannon, Kanon, Goda, and Kumasawa. Oh shit. Why are you so out of it? Okay. So I've already got one out of you. 
We'll start by denying that classic trick where the victims are playing dead. <laughs> I won't go easy on you anymore. Come at me how you like. I'll slice them slantwise one after another. Then repeat this. No one is hiding in any of the six rooms. Let's see you deny the existence of people we aren't aware of. I'll answer. There is no one hiding in the six rooms. Okay. Now I'm sure it's only the six of them in the can. In the can. And they aren't pretending to be dead. What will you do? What will you do? As if a human could manage anything by now. Obediently, obediently kneel to the fact that I can control locks at will with my wonderful magic, okay? Quit babbling. Repeat this, too. The six deaths were instant deaths. Instant deaths? <laughs> what do you mean by that? It means there's a possibility that a single victim on the verge of death managed to escape into the room. And after locking it from the inside to create a closed room, they passed away. Hmm. A classic closed room murder trick. One requiring that the victim received a fatal wound, and then died later. Receive a fatal wound and then die later. It is possible for a closed room to be constructed unexpectedly if the victim holds up inside the room to escape the murderer and then dies after locking the door. In order to deny that possibility, you will need to pro proclaim that the six died instantly with the red, the red truth. <laughs> very well, very well. I'll slay you with my red treasured sword. The six died instantly. By died instantly, I mean the targets instantly became incapable of action after being attacked. Well, it might still have taken him several seconds or minutes to die, in the complete sense of the word. But regardless, it was completely impossible for them to take any actions of their own will. In that sense, I can confirm that they suffered instant deaths. Up until this point, I've just been checking for the classic tricks. Now's when our showdown over the closed rooms really starts, okay? If the culprit isn't on the inside, they were on the outside. So they somehow killed from killed from outside the rooms. <laughs> Have you lost your mind? After all, a closed room equals murder is impossible from the outside, right? That's why only a magical murder would be possible. But seriously, the, the flirting is off the charts. I wish someone would flirt with me like this with like just mysteries and puzzles and shit. Less murder, ideally. Yeah. Ideally. Nah, that's wrong. The right approach is a murder really happened equals it isn't a closed room. No matter how much you try to trick me, this definitely isn't a closed room. It's a sham that only looks like one. However, Battler Sama, only the victims are inside the rooms, and no other people exist inside the rooms. And by the lady's closed room definition, remote murders from outside the room have been clearly denied, have they not? Yeah, there's a cutie, right? Wait, the definition of remote murders is pretty broad, right? It's not just about pulling a fishing line from outside the room and strangling the victim inside the room. For example, a trap would make for an excellent remote murder. Timer looks kind of good. A trap? Hmm, what might that be? Just as an example, let's say that they were instructed to enter rooms that someone had picked out beforehand, and lock the doors from the inside to create the closed rooms themselves. A trap was set up in those rooms that they didn't know about, and that's what killed them. How's that? That doesn't contradict anything. There are no problems. It corresponds to the existing state. There are no problems on our side either. It does not conflict with Milady's closed room definition. 
<laughs> What's with that stupid reasoning? Nothing suspicious was found in any of the rooms, right? What form did that trap have? Where was it hidden and how did it operate? Explain that for all six of them. In the parlor, the guest room, the waiting room, the VIP room, the boiler room, and the chapel. Well, you can't, can you? I refuse to counter that. There's no need for me to explain. And failing to do so doesn't damage my claim. What did you say? Beatrice, it's a devil's proof. The fact that he cannot explain the nature of the trap does not in itself deny the existence of such a trap. Uh, well done. While we're bearing a wonderful move. <laughs> this guy's getting completely used to this. Check. Due to murder trap X that we couldn't find, it'd be possible to establish this closed room murder. I'll kill that check with red truth. The six were not killed by traps. And the de definition definition of a trap? Uh, uh, um, that's it. Something that activates when a victim triggers it on their own. Oh, and that's not all. It also includes things activated by remote control or by a timer. Everything of that sort. <laughs> So, it refers to all arrangements that could carry out a murder without the direct participation of the one who planned it out. Perhaps we might sum it up that way. How's that? I struck back. As if I'd let a human crush this closed room. Looking pretty frantic to win, too. What? What do you mean? Frantically fighting to make me accept your existence. Until now, I thought I was just being toyed around with by you one-sidedly. But that's not actually true. You're also frantically resisting my counters, fighting to show that you exist. Now, I finally really feel that it's true. This isn't torture inflicted on me, over whether I'll surrender or not. This is a fight between you and me on an even footing. Okay, now it's starting to get interesting, isn't it? All six died in closed rooms, and no outsiders were inside. And there was no meddling from the outside, and also no traps. Up until now, I'd probably start suspecting that this had to be the work of magic. And if you decided to show off some bizarre magic at this moment, I might even have surrendered. It's that favorite strategy of yours. You intercept all my moves, and the moment I've exhausted all options and fallen to my knees. When my heart's barriers are at their weakest, you show off some strange magic and take the game all at once. And short temper is something this child has always had, along with a bad habit of rushing things when victory is in sight. <laughs> After all, Milady cannot stand putting off a match. Hey, sh shut up, shut up! It's Battler's turn, right? I finished off that trap piece you advanced. What should I repeat next? Show me what you've got. Right. Now that even traps have been defeated, this looks like a perfect closed room murder at a glance. And that's why I'll spin the chessboard around right now. Here it comes. That special technique of yours. How exactly are you going to spin what around? Try showing me. Yeah, I'll show you. I don't need to think of how six people could be killed inside closed rooms from the outside. It's useless, it's useless, it's all useless. That's right. The question isn't how you can kill from outside the rooms. The point is how they died inside the rooms, making them closed rooms. That's it. This is the answer. If you assume that one of the six victims was the culprit, this closed room can be explained extremely easily. What? Ridiculous. 
I believe I clearly said and read th that the six of them were dead. Oh, there were six deaths. Five were victims who got killed. But if you assume that the other person committed suicide, you can destroy this closed room. Certainly. If the culprit locked themselves in the final closed room and threw away their own life, this closed room chain would be established. The suicide of the culprit. Normally, it would be an unthinkable move, but the argument that the unthinkable cannot exist cannot be used. And he has no responsibility to demonstrate a motive. A truly powerful move which can only be used in a chess match against a witch. Well, one cannot be certain that there was no motive. For example, it has been announced that Kinzo only had a short time left to live. Perhaps he did not regret losing his short remaining life and used his own death to send a message. It might be possible to attach such a, mo such a motive. Milady, it is our turn. Indeed, to think you'd trample even the dignity of the dead to create a culprit. What a heartless, cold-blooded man. I'll set up the dead as the culprit. This, this is worse than inhuman. This worse than inhuman move is one you used to attack Kamankun in the last game. Even though the games are different, I'm taking a shot back at you with this move. As a tribute to Kanonkun for that time. Just now, I freed that Kanonkun from his reg regrets. <laughs> you have no responsibility to hold back here. You should try to confirm that suicide wasn't the cause of any of their deaths. I recommend that you have that child repeated in red. Right. But suicide is, is a naive word that won't corner him. Beato, this will stop you. Repeat it. The six deaths were all homicides. That is painful. Hmm. What's wrong? All six of them were killed, right? I'm just confirming that simple premise we've had from the very beginning, right? Can't you repeat it? <laughs> I refuse to repeat it. There's no reason in particular. You realize that refusing to repeat this part is the same as resigning, right? Checkmate. One of the six was the culprit, and they planned to commit suicide after constructing the closed room. And that's all. Wait. No, um, I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll use the red like you want. None of the six committed suicide. How's that? Are you satisfied? <laughs> I've struck back. I've struck back. <laughs> what the hell? So you can say it. But that's strange. Why are you so panicky? It's your imagination. This time, even I'm feeling the pressure. That's right, I don't have any leeway. Pay it no mind. The line you asked that child to repeat has been altered. Do not be fooled. Time for a bit of tea. Oof. Okay. Yeah, Ooh. I really need that. <laughs> oh, actually, that reminds me that I need to save. There we go. It's too hot for you to drink tea, I'm so sorry. But uh, yeah, I hope you have something nice and cool to drink instead. <sighs> and welcome to Imineko. This is, this is it. That's, that's it. That's the whole thing. No action, only arguments. Um, but it's tense as fuck. <laughs> um, 
There are swords involved though, technically. <laughs> it seems not to have worked, milady. That's right. She didn't say the deaths were all homicides. She changed it to none of them none of the six committed suicide. Which means one of them wasn't killed by someone else and didn't commit suicide. Ugh. I've got it. I've got it. This is the truth. Culprit X, who was hiding among the six, murdered the other five and then set up a closed room. After that, they planned to escape from or hide in that room by some method. However, they got in an accident. The culprit died from an accident that even they hadn't expected, setting up a closed room murder that they had that even they hadn't desired. Now it's over, Beatrice. Check me. D d damn it. Did you think I'd be cornered by something like that? I never announced my resignation over something like that. I'll slice up that foolish checkmate with my red treasured sword over and over again. None of the six died in an ex accidental. My apologies. We request some time to strategize. Please allow us a brief postpo postponement on this matter. It's a fair request. Perhaps you should accept it. Sure, take a break. I've been giving those a lot, given those a lot lately. Now it's your turn to take one. Thank you very much. Come, milady, this way. And let us quietly come to 100 inside our heads. <laughs> Ronove quickly covered Beata's mouth with his hand as she grew thoroughly panicked and agitated, suspending the game. He pulled Beato away, supposedly to hold the strategy conference. It's like deba murder debate club. Um, yeah. Remember to take break, fo breaks, folks. It's really important. Oof, I'm stumbling on words a lot today. But uh, doing our best. Okay. Damn, that demon butler. When Beato got all hot, I had a perfect chance to corner her. It's true, really, I'm just really jazzed about this game existing. <laughs> Beato normally acted like she was graceful and above it all, but she actually had a really short temper and got mad e easily. Her usual intellect had less of a voice when she got excited. Just like me. Donovan certainly is thinking clearly. He probably gave your opponent some time to cool down. That child grew too stubborn trying to remove your check, and was about to easily let several several large pieces go. After all, the first twilight is only a skirmish. It the correct move at that time would have been to withdraw. And yeah, ch sharing things that you enjoy with other people and having them like it too is the best feeling in the world, honestly. So what does it mean? Did I reach checkmate or didn't I? That child was about to say something in red. You probably wouldn't have reached checkmate yet, but most likely. You can expect our opponents to resign once they've cooled their heads. You're joking. Even though she hates losing that much, Yes. In a losing battle, it is essential to withdraw your troops as soon as possible to try and minimize your losses. The difficult part is gauging whether it's a losing battle or not. Your opponent's butler seems to have calmly made that decision. <laughs> oh well. In other words, she managed to escape by a hair's breadth. 
Getting checkmate and delivering the final blow won't be that easy for me. However, you should count this as your victory. It seems they barely managed to prevent a large loss, but they certainly sustained considerable damage. The scale of that child's panic ought to make the depths of that wound quite clear to you. Yeah, you're right. Virgilia and, and Cronove are... I love them. And th this episode and the next one, they just shine. They're so... they're so good. Seriously. <laughs> Feels like she'd start crying if I bullied her anymore. As we talked, Ronove returned with Beato, who wore a meek expression. She didn't yet have her usual bold smile, but it looked like the blood wasn't rushing to her head anymore. Hey, it's your turn. Did you decide on your next move? I resign. For now, I will let you have your victory. Beato told me that frankly. It seemed she'd taken a far-sighted view as though saying, If you want to laugh, then laugh. It was a bit of a killjoy, and I lost my desire to deliver the final blow. Well, not, not a, now that you've resigned. That just means we're even, since my theory and yours can't deny each other. You should treat it more like a tie than a loss. I don't need your disgusting sympathy. I'm telling you that I lost this round. When you find a dog drenched with rain, do you have a sudden urge to whack it with a stick or something? <laughs> nope. I'm not you. Burn. Even though she ridic ridiculed me horribly when I showed signs of defeat, this is the best she's got when the tables are turned. I did feel that was pretty cowardly of her, but I decided to act with dignity as the victor and let it slide. Beato resigned. That's the one result of the first twilight. Beatrice couldn't counter my move of one of the six was the culprit, and that person died in an accident. Now, she probably could have countered it, but for some strategic reason, she admitted defeat. It felt less like I'd won and more like I'd let her slip away at the last second. In a chess match with a witch, battles can be fought solely with pieces known as X, which required no detailed explanations. Thanks to the devil's proof, I could create as many strange fictions as I wanted and use them as fighters in our argument. But that only works in a chess match with a witch. In our human world, you can't use such abstract theories to explain things. The first, this first twilight was a chain of six closed rooms. It certainly may have been possible for a human. Beato wasn't able to deny all possibilities. However, I don't have a clue who committed the crime, or why, or how they actually did it. It may seem strange to hear me saying this after I won, but for some reason, I felt like I'd have been more satisfied if Beatrice had been able to say definitively that it was po impossible for humans. I managed to avoid specifics using an abstract piece called X, but I couldn't deny the sense that some eerie intent that must never be known was filling up this entire mansion. Yeah, I love I love Beato too. She's she's great. They're both great, honestly. I can't believe there's so much still left in this episode. It's 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 one of the longer ones. And I'm really I don't know, it's noticeably longer than the other so far. When being besieged, your true enemy isn't so much the fear of an unseen cul seen culprit 
as it is keeping such fears alive for long periods of time. Maria got bored and started complaining that she wanted to watch TV. There was no TV in the lobby, so she decided to return to the cousin's room on the second floor. The adults probably wanted to make sure Maria wasn't left on her own. They told all the children to go to the second floor of the cousin's room. Yeah, episode 4 is like a beast. <laughs> and we're gonna slay that beast, but oh boy. It's gonna take a lot of episodes. It's gonna take a lot. Because I think it's longer by a pretty big margin too, if I remember correctly. I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head. But yeah. It's your favorite. Nice. Good taste. George, who was grief-stricken by the loss of his fiance, led the cousins up to the second floor without any resistance. At first, Nanjo had been reading a book in the lobby, but when he noticed the relatives looking like they wanted to discuss something sinister, he said, It seems I am in the way and returned to his room on the second floor. I don't think that was his voice, but that's his voice now. Get used to it. <laughs> Can never remember. I'm starving. And if we just keep sitting around, we'll get sleepy too. It's only natural. We didn't get any sleep at all last night. We'll probably end up being barricaded here for a full 24 hours. It may be wiser to take naps and turn instead of overstressing ourselves. True. My husband and I will remain here. I... So I ask that anyone having trouble staying awake take it easy and rest. <laughs> Thank you for subscribing, ow, 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 ow. I know you said you would, but I didn't think you would. I really appreciate it. I hope you like the emotes. Thank you so much, and welcome. How are you doing? Our opponent might be expecting that, right? Even if they couldn't defeat this many people, if that number shrinks enough, they may plan to use that moment to strike. There are seven of us here, so we could take three hour, three hour shifts in pairs. Tomorrow morning's a long way off. We still have some energy now, but Tonight's going to be tough. Sure will. Anyone sleepy? Don't overdo it and get some rest. Hideyoshi looked around at everyone to see who wanted to sleep first, but no one volunteered. Everyone was just as tired, but no one was bold enough to go to sleep right away. Their fear of the unknown cul culprit was just as strong as their sleepiness. Nobody? Well, don't overdo it, everyone. If we get tired, we'll deal with it then. I'll admit I'm sleepy, but I'm not in the mood now. As Ava spoke sharply, she reread the second letter from Beatrice, which had been found in the boiler room. Beatrice had sent them two letters, which had repeatedly told them to solve the riddle of the epitaph. And she'd even provoked them by saying she'd give up her assets and the headship if they could solve it. Ava took out a notebook and opened it to a page with the epitaph copied onto it. Is that the, is it is this that epitaph? Yes. I hate doing what the culprit says, but we do have time to waste. I think it's the perfect way to stave off boredom. Not a bad way to kill time. Why don't we challenge it together as siblings? Can I borrow that? I'll rewrite it just a little larger. That's so, son. Do you have a slightly larger piece of paper? A slightly larger piece of paper. There should be paper in the servant room. I will bring some. Also, I will save, thank you, Anne, for the reminder.
Natsuhi immediately brought a blank B4 sheet of paper from the servant room. Kirie borrowed Ava's notebook, wrote out the epitaph on the paper, and laid it out on the table. Then, everyone quickly peered down at it. They automatically formed a crowd. I've heard about it, but really, this is a tough riddle. I don't have a clue what it's talking about. At one point, I also did my best to solve it, but I was just as clueless. If you did know, you wouldn't have come all the way out here with a plan to make money. After all, it's ten tons of gold we're talking about. This is the first time I've read through it seriously, but... Roughly speaking, couldn't it be split into three parts? I've been thinking this since last night, but... You really are a good thinker, Kiryu-san. <laughs> hey, Shu, welcome to the stream. Stuff happened. It was wild. Perhaps you'll be able to easily solve this riddle that we couldn't. Yeah, Kitty is sharp. She might find a more interesting take on it if she comes in without any confusing biases. That's right. Kitty san would you mind giving us your honest opinion after reading the epitaph? I doubt you'll find it useful. You all give me too much credit. That's fine, just say whatever comes into your head. Let's hear your thoughts. The hints you give always help me out when I'm worried. Oh, so I have been helpful. It's nice to finally hear about this now. Come on, don't I always thank you? <laughs> you two sure are close. I'm jealous. And the rest of us would also love to hear these hints of yours. We're just killing time anyway, so relax, okay? <laughs> oh my god, you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I hope you're uh, having a good day. You folks are crazy. Like, in the best way. <laughs> okay, focus. Kitty was disturbed at being praised so highly for something so strange. But they had all the time in the world. Realizing that this was just a way to waste time, she decided to accept the role she'd been given. I'm sure I'll say something off the mark, but... Well, I'll put forward my ideas. Indeed. What did you mean at the beginning about how it could be divided into three parts, roughly speaking? Well, here we go. This is the good stuff. Well, I just mean what I said. I think that, overall, the epitaph can be divided into three sections. I turned on auto-read for some reason. First, there are the five lines up until there sleeps the key to the gold. Up until this point is the first pipe, which directs you to the location of the key. And then, there's the part formed by the eleven lines up until the tenth twilight, which refers to the location of the Golden Land itself. And the remaining six lines make up the part after the Golden Land has been reached. I see. It can be divided into three parts about the key, the Golden Land, and the Golden Land's treasure. Even we have been able to grasp that much. The three sections that refer to the key, the door, and the treasure. Nisa, don't put in any more than you have to. Let Kiryu-san speak her ideas freely. Kiryu, please continue. We see it the same way you do so far. So, then. I wonder about the meaning of that thing in the beginning, the beloved hometown. Normally, that would refer to where Grandfather lived, right? Since Father went to all the trouble of telling us that it's beloved, we can imagine that it's a hometown he had strong feelings for. Did Father come from Odawara? Odawara is definitely where he was born, but I don't think that's the hometown he loved. I imagine all of us siblings have the same place in mind. Right. 
This probably isn't Odawara. From what I've heard, he had a very fun time as a youth. What's that? Okay. <laughs> Being made the Ushiramiya family head was probably Dad's greatest bit of misfortune in life. Probably. Father didn't actually want to become the head. So, where is this place? Is there a river there where sweet fish swim? Maybe there was at the time. There's been a lot of development there since then, and the sweet fish might have disappeared. It would be extremely difficult to investigate whether sweet fish were there during grandfather's boyhood years. And there probably isn't just a single river. I believe we all gave this a thorough investigation geographically. You even went to the actual place to investigate directly, right, Ava? That was only as a vacation. But the townscape had changed completely since Father's time. After all, it was caught up in that war, wasn't it? By now, even precisely locating the place Father lived is impossible. I imagine that if Father went there himself now, even he wouldn't be able to pick out the place he'd lived anymore. Well, after all, those guys have also gone through a remarkable recovery. Does the part about the Swedefish River bring any place name clearly to mind? Well, yeah. After all, they're Swedefish, right? People say they live in rivers with clean water, and so there are countless rivers that might work. Any stream Dad innocently went Swedefish fishing in was probably buried by the development later. It'd be different if we had a map from before the war, or a person who knew a lot about how the area was before the war, but... It probably isn't something like that. What do you mean? Behold the sweet fish river running through my beloved hometown. You who seek the golden land, follow its path downstream in search of the key. After these two lines, there's a single blank line. Something is being presented with just these two lines. What if the next three lines continue based upon that something? What do you mean something is being presented? I don't know. At any rate, what we can get from these two lines alone isn't vague. Isn't something vague, like the question of which river it might be, but the clear presentation of the keyword river. It may be that this isn't a river with water flowing down it. The Sweetfish River might be some kind of metaphor. What sort of impressions does the word Sweetfish give? Sweetfish are, sweetfish are like salmon. They're freshwater fish, but they go out into the ocean right after they're born. When they get big, they go back to the river to live there. And then they spawn there and end their lives there. Well, they leave their home at one point, but when they get big, they come back and lay eggs. Might be able to link that to the idea of uh, clan prosperity. Um, they're freshwater fish, but they can live in the ocean. I didn't know that. I figured river fish wouldn't be able to live in the sea. And they are called sweet fish because they have a pleasant aroma. I've never eaten one, but I have heard that they can be quite delicious when grilled with salt. What's that, Nazi son? You've never eaten salt grilled sweet fish? They're delicious! You should try it sometime soon. It's a food for commoners. Hardly appropriate for your mouth. God damn it, Kraus. Th this is just my wild idea, but the impression I get from a sweetfish river makes me suspect a family tree. The sweetfish go out into the ocean for a time, but they return to the river where they were born to spawn, right? Reminds me of myself. You're right. By this point, I can confess that I've sometimes suspected that it refers to you and Maria Chan. I see. If you follow the river downstream, you will find a village. If you go down the family tree, all you find is Maria's name. Only her name has a uh, ri or sato, the character father uses for village here. Yeah, Kraus Kraus needs to learn to not talk. Oh boy. Isn't that right? But 
As you all know, Father doesn't like Maria, and he almost never speaks with her. And in the past, Father told me to give Maria a completely different name. I just decided to go with Maria on my own. Father was very mad about that. Given that, it's very hard to imagine that he would re reference Maria's name in his precious epitaph about who would succeed his wealth and inheritance. Yeah, he's also a garbage husband. It's true, it's true. Have you ever let Maria Chamberlain read the epitaph? Uh, yes, of course. But it looked as though she didn't have a clue. She didn't have a clue, and she kept going on about that same occult stuff, about how it was a resurrection ceremony for the witch. A connection between Father and Maria. Certainly, they do share that occult ho hobby, but they never interacted. I can't imagine that it refers to Maria, either. What sticks out to me is how he went out of his way to add Beloved to that first line. Like you all said just now, if Father was reluctant about becoming the Ushiromiya family head, would he have fond memories for anything connected to that? I don't think this can be Orawara, which represents the Ushiromiya head family. I believe this word, word beloved here at the beginning must refer to a place full of very important memories to Father. Hmm. Well, that's fine. It would be hard to pinpoint since we don't even have even a trace of a map from that time. But at any rate, there are probably several rivers with sweet fish swimming in them near Dad's hometown during his youth. That's if we're looking for a river with water flowing down it, right? And then, go on, kitty son. I don't really understand the, li the three lines starting with, if you follow the river downstream, you will find a village. It's probably linked to the two lines about the Sweetfish River. I imagine it's something we'd understand automatically if we knew what the Sweetfish River really was. Until we figure that out, it's probably useless to try and solve those three lines any further. So we're stuck unless we know what the Sweetfish River really is. And there's no guarantee it even means a literal river. Seriously. What's up with the Sweetfish? Did Dad like to eat them? Or does it have some special meaning? Is it pointless to read too deeply into it? If you don't have both a micro and a macro perspective, your field of vision grows narrow. It might be better to be flexible and avoid thinking too deeply. Focusing on an abstract image of a river where fish swim, or something that can flow, up or down. Then, the answer behind the Sweetfish River passes through the next three lines and makes it way, its way to the key to the Golden Land. If you think about it that way, I wonder if it was a mistake to split it into three parts. There's actually four parts. Go down the Sweetfish River, Find the key to the Golden Land, Journey to the Golden Land, and the treasure of the Golden Land. Hmm. Truly intriguing. Well, you've gone this far. Would you mind continuing and telling us your opinion on the most central portion of the epitaph, up to the point where we reach the Golden Land on the Tenth Twilight? That's the most symbolic, and also the most disturbing part. Since the word sacrifices keeps coming up, I can't help but think it has something to do with Father's occult ceremonies. How do you see it, Kiriya-san? Kiriya recrossed her arms several times, peering into the paper with the epitaph copied onto it as though she was looking through it. This is very difficult. It starts with the one who obtains the key. So you probably won't be able to continue without knowing what that key means. I'll have to give up on that, but I'll take a shot at trying to solve it anyway. Just like how the Sweetfish River isn't necessarily a river with water flowing down it, it's also doubtful that this key is actually something shaped like a key. Right. It might also be a code, or a keyword. After all, this key isn't something to be stuck into a keyhole. 
It's something that selects six people to be sacrifices for the first twilight. In that sense, we can say for sure that this key isn't being used to open the door to the Golden Land. But what a disturbing key it is. A key that can choose human six human sacrifices. How would a key select anything? Do you spin it around like a roulette? This key indicates a certain group of six people. No, we should say it indicates a certain group of six things. If this doesn't mean a literal command to offer sacrifices. For example, it could be an anagram. An anagram? Do you mean playing with letters? Yes. I've been thinking about it ever since Rosa started talking about the family tree. And about how village was a part of Marie-Chan's name. It seems that ever since the words Beloved Hometown came up, Rudolfsson, for example, has assumed that this epitaph points to some coordinates or some other geographical feature, but that might not be the case. This could be some kind of puzzle, or maybe playing with letters. Forgive me, but how does one play with letters? Oh, well, it's like, sucker Mary barrels. What do you get when you take out the E's and R's? God damn it, Rudolph. Like that. Well, you were raised well, nutsy son, so you probably don't know. M Mary? Take out the E's and R's, huh? <laughs> Stop it. It is an undignified game, inappropriate for you. Only Natsuhi didn't get it and had a blank look on her face, because she is pure and innocent. It seemed she'd only guessed that the answer had to be something undignified, going by Rudolph and Ava's, Ava's sniggers. Yeah, we do, we do know where Battler gets it from. His dad is... They're very similar. Uh, uh, Natsuhi ne -san, it's something like this. Uh, this is just something from Maria's book of riddles, okay? There's this thing called a Tanuki notebook. It's a notebook, written like a code, with a lot of Taz mixed in. And if you remove all of the Taz, then the true paragraph pops up. It's a game like that. Uh, huh, oh, I, I see. Huh? That's how he finally realized the answer to the undignified Riddle Rudolph had posed, and her face grew red as she hung her head in embarrassment. The first time that I read this story, I had to actually scroll up and read what he said again, just to figure it out, because I also am an innocent, apparently. Fun fact. So, maybe kill actually means remove, in that sense, right? Yes. I also thought that. It's possible that the key to the Golden Land is a word with six characters. In other words, the Ta from the Tanuki Notebook is actually six characters here? Hmm, this is getting complicated. Playing with letters, is it? Hmm. <laughs> it's... It's nice to see that you're all so pure and, and lovely. In Japan, it really feels like a child's game, but it's apparently a stylish form of humor among intellectuals in the English world. Is that true? That doesn't sound like... that doesn't sound right. It's easy to imagine that Father was interested in it. I don't think that's true, bud. But, by this point, I quickly lose my ability to understand it. Up until this part, it may have been filled with mysteries, but it was extremely sequential. Sweetfish River, go down it, then find the key. All of that is extremely sequential. And as a result, we can guess that we gain a six-character key. But in that case, we, don't, we now don't know what we kill the six characters from. That's right. 
Where do we pull the six characters from? It doesn't tell us. On the second twilight, there are those who remain. Which means that, at the very least, that something has a limited number of characters. You could read it like it's telling you to continue with the remaining characters after the six, first six characters are removed. And yet, we don't know what this something is, even though it should have been shown to us at the beginning. Are we wrong, even in our assumption that this is playing with letters? Hmm. Everyone crossed their arms and fell silent. <laughs> Lulu, don't look it up on Google. I'll, I'll tell you later. It felt like they were about to reach a novel understanding they hadn't managed before, but they stumbled just one step short. I, I did not solve the epitaph the first time around. I, um... The, the internet helped a lot with that one. I was on all the the message boards, you know. But no, I, d I did not figure that one out. I figured out some other stuff. So there's that. But not definitely not all of it. And not the epitaph. Then, Hideyoshi's stomach rumbled heartily. That silence was broken by laughter. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Strangely enough, by spinning the gears in my head for a change, my stomach's gone completely empty. Looks like I can't stand missing breakfast. <laughs> Not so easy. Is, isn't there anything to eat here? Uh, there should be at least be enough set aside for breakfast. I will prepare it. I'm also starving, and I'll bet those brats above us are the same. Still... I doubt there's enough for the 18 people here, much less a full three meals, right? Uh, that's right. It'll be a long journey till tomorrow. Maybe we'd better take a trip back to the mansion and fish around for some canned food or something in the kitchen. There's nothing more than crackers and snacks here, but if that will be sufficient, I can get them ready for you all. But with this many people, there might not be any left for lunch. That'll do for now. Would you mind getting those ready? Lulu, you're right. Also, anyone who solves the epitaph on the first playthrough try... Genius. Seriously. It looked like the men had been taken over with an appetite that stopped all thought. The atmosphere grew more peaceful, and the Epitaph investigation team split up for the time being. But Ava kept staring at the paper the Epitaph was written on like she was going to burn a hole through it. Playing around with letters was nothing more than a theory of mine. There's a chance it's mistaken. Ava-san, don't take it too seriously, okay? Thank you. I'll just keep doing this on my own. Would you mind leaving me alone? Eva spoke coldly. Kitty didn't bother her anymore, and instead went to help Natsuhi prepare bre breakfast. Nesa, shouldn't we also help prepare breakfast? Then you go help. I'm busy solving this. S sorry. Then I'll help. Good grief. How can you be like that? Huh? The Ushirumi family headship will be given to the person who solves this epitaph. It looks like you've given up from the beginning, as if it has nothing to do with you. But, if you can solve it, there's a chance even you will be able to receive the headship. This is a chance to steal everything from Nisan. Why aren't you taking such a once-in-a-lifetime chance more seriously? Rosa hung her head, unsure as to how she should answer. Too late, she regretted carelessly speaking to her sister when she was in a bad mood. If you've noticed anything, say so. Even though Kiri-san and I were thinking hard, you just kept nodding your head, didn't you? Come on. Isn't there anything you've noticed? 
Come on. Damn, Ava. Rude. Holy shit, your friend's a genius, by the way. Uh, um... Don't you think this part's strange? Strange? What is? Uh, it's just that... This whole section's written like a journey to the Golden Land, right? You reach the Golden Land, and then you receive its treasures. What's your point? You think there's some sort of keyword tied to those treasures? Uh, no, not the treasures themselves. Look, in the Tenth Twilight, isn't how you receive the treasures strange? Mm hmm. Ah. Uh. Why does it say we'll receive the treasures once and for the last time? If we only get them once, then there's no point telling us it's the last time. And the same thing in reverse. Um, but I'm probably splitting hairs over nothing if you think about it. This is Father we're talking about, after all. He probably just said it that way to make it sound more dramatic. this child grumbling about. She's probably annoyed by all the tips you gave Butler summer, madam. Not really. That doesn't annoy me. On the contrary, I'm happy to see that useless battle f battler finally reach a level where he can match me. <laughs> Did Battler Kun and I get a little too close? Perhaps us old fogies had best leave you young and zillow. <laughs> and Virgilia and Ronovid giggled and cackled. Beatrice's irritation meter finally reached, reached its limit. God, enough with everyone laughing at me! Ronovid, vanish for a while. Disappear. Disappear! Certainly. Then I shall rest for the time being. <laughs> right, she's so cute. Ronovan bowed his head, still laughing, and vanished. After that, all that remained was the grumpy and irritated figure of Beatrice, and Virgilia, who was coolly enjoying her tea. When you said there are no more than 18 people on this island, you actually cornered yourself. I knew it. I did have this feeling that it might be a bit too early. I suppose that was right after all, wasn't it? If you had let him further astray first, things might have been different. But, as it was, that trump card was a real waste. You ended up rousing him instead. In addition to denying the witch, Battler had possessed a second victory condition, one of explaining everything without suspecting one of the eighteen. It was at that point, when he'd been tossed about by two opposing goals, that his heart should have been at its weakest. However, Beatrice had used the red carelessly, proclaim proclaiming that there were no more than 18 people. Because of that, Battler had been forced to sus suspect one of the 18. And he had finally begun to build up the resolve he needed to accept that. Battler was stubborn. That was exactly why fissured fissures would run all through him like breaking china when he was stuck in a fragile spot. That itself should have been his greatest weak point, but... Hmm. Did I get a little too careless after my complete victory last time? Yes, you were too careless. The last game was a difficult one for Battle Lacoon, but it seems this game will become a difficult one for you. 
a broken vase will never return to its original form. So it would be more constructive to think of a next move rather than regretfully picking up the pieces. However, now that Battler has figured out as much as he has, how should I plot against him? <laughs> Your troubled face is an even better snack than the Ronobe's cookies. Hmm. You and Battler and you and Ronobe are treating me like sweets now. Even though I'm not sweet at all. With a shameful childlike face that she would never have shown in front of Battler, Beatrice rolled her head around on top of the table. She's just face planting on the table, it's so cute. T teacher, at least give me a hint. Oh, what kind of hint? If you know some really good move that'll leave Battler speechless and make him want to accept me. I won't ask you to say it outright, so even if it's just a hint. <laughs> I can't. I'm on Battlecon's side right now, so I couldn't teach you something that would give you an advantage. Come on, don't be so stingy. Stingy, I believe the word is. <laughs> I always forget that one. Your disciple's in trouble, right? I seem to remember you brazenly boasting that you had surpassed your teacher. Ooh, please act like an old person and give me just a bit of your crafty ideas. Please. It's mean if you only help Bandler. My, my. You're still a spoiled child. But it's true that I may have given Battlecoon a few too many hints. It did serve as a scolding to you, but perhaps it was a little too much support for a fair game. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Please, teacher, at least just a hint now. This is only a hint. Think about what it means by yourself, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'll think about it myself, so please. Please, give me one that'll leave Battler down in the dumps, teacher. Considering how she acted like a great and mighty witch in front of Battler, the way she acted when he wasn't around was truly, truly pathetic, is what the game text says, but I disagree. Virgilia sighed at how childish Beato still was, despite all the time that had passed. Then, just a hint. Do you know of Aesop's fable, The North Wind and the Sun? Of course. It's a story about how the North Wind and the Sun challenge each other to see who can steal the cloak off a traveler, right? That's right. Violent, impatient methods aren't necessarily the best decisions in all cases. <laughs> you don't have to tell me that. I've already reflected on the mistakes I made when I was too anxious to achieve victory. Think well about what this means. And furthermore, there's one point that Battler seems to be misunderstanding a bit, but he isn't the only one. Do you understand the victory conditions of this game? What else is there other than making Battler surrender? See? You're already wrong there. How am I wrong? Your victory isn't making Battler Kun surrender. Isn't it making Battlecoon accept your existence? What's this? You want me to butter him up, begging him to accept me as a witch? How foolish. I haven't sounded that low. <sighs> Beato growled like a dog in a bat mood. I don't know how to do growling noises. Virgilia shrugged her shoulders, snickering at her disciple, who was as short-tempered as ever. That is my hint. For the rest, you'll have to consider deeply on your own. You brr, but with a grr. Grr. It'll, it'll, it'll do. For the rest, you'll have to consider deeply on your own. In any event, your moves until up until now will not work on Battle of Moon. A significant tactical adjustment will probably be required. 
I don't need you to tell me that. I don't have a clue what you mean by the north wind and the sun. But at any rate, I realize I'll have to alter my chords. I'll introduce a scheme clever enough to surprise even you, teacher. <laughs> I look forward to it. I wonder how Butler Kring will tackle that. I wish you good luck as well. After Battler, you mean? Hmm. You hear often. <laughs> I never grr. But maybe I should. Are you gonna give up and resign already? I guess you are that tired. If only you just grab a futon and sleep. As my mind grew vague and I pretended to fight my drowsiness while sinking deeper and deeper into the sofa, I scolded myself. You also dreamed about stealing the position of family head from Kraus, right? Even though my magic's given you a chance, are you already throwing it away? You could say that, but... This riddle is really hard. Even a wire puzzle would be better. Um, and this is Ava's younger self. Who started appearing when she arrived on the island, I believe. At least in that case, you know for sure that it's solvable. But, in the case of this epitaph riddle, we've been given no reason to be sure of that. I might just be fighting a useless battle. Still hazy, I looked at the, at the notebook I'd been holding the whole time. It was open to a page with the epitaph, which I must have stared at hard enough to burn holes in it so on so many hundreds of nights, I'd lost count. That page is truly a door. On the other side lies the Golden Land, the place I've wanted to drag myself to, no matter the effort, ever since I was a child. And the place I was never able to reach. Am I touching the door with both hands? With the book? No, the door, right here, in front of me, ready to be open, and yet still unable to reach the other side? That's right. Your hand is already on the door. Come on, open it with all your strength and read the characters written on the door. Uh, open it with all my strength. Read the characters written on the door. Strain your eyes. See through the thing beyond the, the epitaph written in the notebook. The beloved hometown definitely won't betray our expectations. The only past father held dear happened during his childhood years. That's... that's right. Then what about the Sweetfish River? There are several rivers where they swim, and there's reason to doubt that this just refers to one close to the place father lived. If we take out a map and start calculating which rivers the with Sweetfish were closest, things will quickly get vague and we won't be able to narrow it, narrow it down. Your oldest first word was rar. That's adorable. Didn't you say it yourself? You said it didn't have to be a river with water flowing down it. If the word Sweetfish is too complicated, why not forget it? Think of a river. A river. Linking it with a family tree wasn't a bad idea. Try thinking about how to link a river with something else along those lines. It isn't a river. But where else could Sweetfish swim? Oh, but if we're talking about places Sweetfish can swim, then maybe the ocean has something to do with this. Didn't my husband even say that they go out into the ocean even though they're river fish. T 
into the ocean. No. But... Huh? Did you notice? But that's just a faint memory. There's supposed to be a room for storing books in this building, right? If you investigate, you can make sure. If that's the Sweetfish River, and if key might be a six-character word, then could the key actually be resting in that river? I, I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, I have to search in an atlas. But even if I know that, I don't know from what I should take the six characters. You really don't know. Think deeply. We're pretty smart, so our ideas are solid. Don't think of it like it's something as massive as the riddle of the epitaph, but like it's a child's riddle. Men are always children, no matter how old they get. Even if father has advanced into old age, that doesn't change the fact that he's essentially a child at heart. I mean, she's not wrong. Throw away your all, father. Think of this like it's a worthless and infantile game with riddles. Like the ones Maria suddenly brought out on the boat. Riddles. Worthless. Infantile. We got a new emote, folks. Apparently got approved already. The shit. Worthless. Infantile. Sure, that was. What was it? Um, that it's probably. I'm sure if my memory isn't wrong, that it's probably the case. And no, I don't have to rely on my vague memory. I should be able to figure that out immediately by searching the library. We probably already noticed the answer. All that's left is to investigate whether it's correct or not. Come on, Ava. Let's go to the library, making sure no one sees us. There, we should find a mountain of thick books that didn't fit in Father's study. I'm sure we'll find a book that answers our question. Quickly. This is the first and last chance we'll ever get to make our dreams come true. Oh, you're right, Numb Numb. When Natsuhi tried to lay a blanket over him, Ava suddenly jumped up. I'm sorry. It looks like I woke you. Ava, if you're sleepy, don't overdo it. You rest first. Thank you. I'm just going to the bathroom for a bit to wash my feet. You should take it easy and rest. You're just gonna make yourself feel worse, you know? I told you I'm fine. I'll be right back. After leaving only those words behind, I rapidly left the lobby. The lobby was partitioned off by a door, so as soon as I went into the corridor, they could no longer see me. The library was next to the servant room. Father always owned a vast book collection. But ever since he started to become engrossed with his occult, occult hobby, that collection grew even larger so that the normal books suitable for a normal study had been forced out as his study overflowed. This so-called library was mostly used as a storage room for those normal books. They were all thick, like completely, like complete encyclopedias for intellectuals. But that was very convenient for me, now that I was investigating something. Yeah, it's- I love them all. Except Kinzo. I even kind of kids a little bit. I love them all, but they all suck. I entered softly, and, just in case, I checked the room with my gun readied, making sure that there were no suspicious people here. Then I locked it from the inside. I actually wasn't thinking that the murderer might be hiding somewhere. What scared me was the thought that one of my siblings might hear what I was investigating, because I never learned to share. My heart had started racing before I realized it. I was half asleep just a moment ago, so I didn't realize how significant this thing I noticed was. But 
As I gradually became aware, my heart started to feel like it was about to explode. I, I wonder if any of the other siblings have noticed this. I don't think... I don't think Krause and Rudolph will notice. But I don't know about Kitty. She has extra extraordinarily good intuition. And I don't know ab about Rosa either. <laughs> Rosa's stupid too. She always has been, incredibly so. Really? I'd say she was wise enough to make you think she was stupid so that she didn't earn herself unnecessary malice. Here it is. I wonder if we'll find it in this one. I pulled the book out and flipped through the pages. So this is... A Sweetfish River. I see. This is what the Sweetfish River means. Don't dawdle around. Research further. Yes. I understand. If you follow the river downstream, you'll find a village. By using the character village, does he mean a town or something? That's just an area of dense population, so there could be any number of those. Why have you stopped thinking? Oh, is this too much work for you? If only you just give up. If only you just hand the Ushidomiya headship over to Kitty. I, I don't want to. I will become the head. This is... This is my first and last chance. What is this village? What does it mean? Do you find one if you go down the river? Uh... uh In the village, look for the shore the two will tell you of. That symbol means shore. Get it? right before my eyes. The pieces that I hadn't been able to understand at all began to snap. Snap. Into place, all by themselves. I couldn't even rem remember to close my open mouth. My throat grew completely dry. Is it really okay for this to be the answer? Really? Really? But this isn't six characters at all. I'm absolutely sure this is the answer, but this doesn't reach six characters at all. Did you stop thinking again? In that case, think of a way you could read it with six characters. If you can't think of one, then research it. There has to be an answer. You must not doubt that. Is believing in that too much for you? If only you just cry yourself to sleep and then you can just give up and die. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. S six characters. I. I found it. This. This is. The key to the golden land. Lulu, stop telling her to chill out. She's she's figured it out. This is like a big riddle. This is a big deal for Ava, okay? <laughs> she deserves a little freak out as a treat. Yes. This This is the key to the golden land. The key to our childhood dreams. Okay, that's fair. The only keyhole this key can be stuck in is that place. That has to be what offering the sacrifices means. I'm sure you get it by now, right? gold on the line? Revenge on her siblings?
That's a lot, you know? <laughs> it, it was an interesting theory, but I, I, I do say that uh, I'm contractually obliged, obligated, to say that about all the theories. For now. Until we finish all the thingies. This way? Go this way? They're inviting me to go this way. <gasps> My heart leapt. Because there, gaping wide, was an opened mouth in the eerie darkness. What's this? What is this? When I strained my eyes, peering into the darkness, I saw something that looked like a light switch. In addition, there was a switch with opened, open and close written on it. When I resolutely pushed the switch, rough lights, like you'd find in a coal mine, turned on sporadically, making a staircase that stretched underground come hazily into view. Eerily enough, it looked even more gloomy with the lights turned on. Near the light switch was that open and close switch. It would probably open or close this, but if the open part happened to be broken, I might be shut away in this creepy underground area for all eternity. So for the time being, I didn't touch that switch. And as I readied my gun again, I slowly went down the stairs. I can neither confirm nor deny any, t any theories. It's true. The ceiling was very high, so it didn't feel cramped. On the contrary, it felt as though a cool breeze was blowing upwards, and that creepiness seemed to form a sort of aura. As I readied my gun and carefully stared forwards, I descended the stairs. The walls, the stairs, the lights, all of them were very old-fashioned. It was easy to su suspect that this had been built back when the mansion had been constructed on this island. There were cracks in the ceiling, and water clung to the walls, constantly dripping down. That water fell into a gutter that had been set up alongside the stairs, then quickly and silently flowed into the underground darkness, as though it was telling me to go faster. The staircase kept turning back on itself. I didn't know how far I've gone. I don't know how far I've gone, but I think it's much deeper than one floor. Eventually, a rough metal door showed itself, and there, characters had been written in a dark red paint. They probably had been written a long time ago. On the tenth twilight, at journey's end, you shall attain to the power of the Golden Land's treasures once and for the last time. My heart, which was already about to explode, jumped about even more as soon as I recognized those deep red characters. There's no mistake. This is the last stop. Father's Golden Land. I calmed my throbbing heart, somehow regained my composure, and readied my gun again. But since, in the end, I couldn't open the door with my gun held in both hands, I lowered the gun, carefully hid my breathing, and opened the door. Th this place is... My first impression when I saw the room was that it might be linked to one of the rooms in the mansion. That's right. It had exactly the same atmosphere about it as a sealed VIP room on the second floor. But this was underground, so there were no windows. There was only the solemn light of a grand chandelier. But even though it was dimly lit by the faint light, the quality of the interior was more than enough to take your breath away. A bed with a canopy, and a rocking chair that looked like it would be comfortable to sit in, an extravagant sofa and carpet. The room was like a dream every girl yearns for at least once. And yet, since it was an underground hidden room with no windows, it felt more like the hidden house of a witch. 
I'd never swallowed the legend of Beatrice, Witch of the Forest. However, after being shown this room, it certainly became hard to doubt that she actually had existed and had lived in this room. And what's with all the guns? I mean, Kinza was specifically obsessed with American Westerns, I guess. So yeah, it, it's definitely an American influence there. So yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> Is someone there? Even though I was completely shocked by this room, I carefully, no, timidly, searched the interior with my gun raised. And at the back of the room, I found it. <sighs> my gasp came out strangely, like a bunny being choked. After all, after finding something like this, no one would be able to stop that kind of stupid voice from leaking out. This is one of my favorite songs in the whole freaking game. It's... it's here. It's really here. Father's gold. On the opposite side of the canopy bed, it was piled up in a massive heap. It was a mountain. A mountain of gold ingots. Of course, they weren't piled up carelessly in a way that would damage the dignity of this room. A beautiful scarlet satin wee was laid on the mountain of gold, creating a beautiful three-colored mix between the red, the gold, and the black of the deep, the deep darkness. It was as though when the witch slept on this bed, the gold would be a respectful chamberlain waiting on her, nobly, refinedly, gracefully, beautifully. It was attentively piled there with an imposing air. When I tried to grab a single gold ingot, I was surprised at its weight. It was probably about 10 kilograms. Just this ingot would probably be worth more than 10 million. The Ushiromiya family crest, the one-winged eagle, was lightly imprinted on it. It was hard to tell whether it, whether it had worn away or whether the impression had been made carelessly in the first place, but it was certainly the crest of the one-winged eagle. Just how many ingots were piled up there? By doing a quick count here and there, and judging by the height, there had to be a few hundred at least. My mind's already gone blank, so I can't do the math well. Even a moderate guess would put it above several billion yen. <laughs> That's right. Of course. After all, there's ten tons of gold, right? The current value, that's more than 20 billion yen of gold. I found it before anyone else, I found it. <laughs> in, the, in front of the mountain of gold, I spread my arms and looked up at the ceiling. A laugh without a trace of dignity flowed out from my entire body. I had no intention of laughing in a weird way, but, but I couldn't hold back the happy feeling that was flowing through me. My older brother probably wouldn't accept this loss just because I found this gold. But from now on, there would be no changing the fact that I had been the one to find it. To steal away the headship of the family, some more subtle bargaining would probably still be required. But after everything I've gone through until now, that's a completely trivial problem. Even if I lose out on the Ushiramiya family headship, I already have 20 billion yen worth of gold. <laughs> At times, I've thought that money is such a worthless thing. I thought there were so many things in this world that you can't buy with money. But now I see, that's just a lie. Just an excuse that the have-nots make for themselves. Damn, Ava. In front of this mountain of gold, I finally realized something so obvious. By using this money, I can give birth to all the happiness in this world. With this, my money, 
With this money, my husband's company is already saved. We will always be happy as a family. And I can even leave a vast sum of money to George. The rest of the relatives will eventually be ruined and disappear. At that time, George will use this gold, and just like Grandfather did, he will revive the Ushinomiya family's lost honor. George is the true successor to the Ushinomiya family. It happened. My wish was granted. The dream that I have wished for ever since I was born into this world as Ushinomiya Eva has been granted completely at this very moment. My husband and I will be happy for all eternity. And I can also give my only son, George, eternal happiness. His, his fiance died. There's no way he'll waste it on foolish pleasures. My older brother has chewed the Ushidomiya family to bits, but George and I will revive it. And that means I truly have succeeded the Ushidomiya family headship. I was successful. I did it. Hi, I'm George. Hi, your mother finally succeeded. This truly sucks a little bit, though. No one will be able to threaten this now. <laughs> That's right. After this, never again will we be, be smothered by sad nights. Congratulations, me. Congratulations, Ushiromiya Eva. Right here, right now. The sad half of our life will have its heart's desire granted. It's all thanks to you. I was given this chance because of your magic. Because of that chance, I was able to make it here. Thank you. But my magic wouldn't have been granted if we both didn't believe in each other. So it isn't just the power of my magic. This is our victory. Because of that, congratulations. Us. Thank you, me. Thank you, Ushiromiya Eva. I'm glad I didn't give in before now. I'm glad that I didn't drown in sorrow and forget to keep struggling. No, this is my magic. Our magic. Your magic was the real thing. Beatrice, the witch of the forest, is nothing more than an illusion. You are the real witch. A wielder of real magic. That's right. Right now, you are the golden witch, Beatrice. It's... My problem with George is he talks like a... I'll say this after the scene. I don't want to ruin the moment. He talks like a fuckboy. I said that's my problem with George. Like the way he talks about Shannon is very creepy. And it's very like, you know what, I'll just nigger her into like, like, and he's like, Oh, I like it when I make things awkward for her and I like teasing her. Yes, water. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, I lifted the water bottle like, here you go, but you can't see. It's... You've, you've written... Num Num Show us the essays. Give us the goods. Well, me specifically, because I imagine they're spoilers, but... Um, there's some, some stuff about George later on, actually, that, um, it, it's not that bad, it's, it's just a particular dislike that I have, like, he's not a good, it, like, he's made mistakes, basically, they all have, because, like, Battle has talked about, you know, kind of being rude to people before and stuff, well, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the way that he... 
the way that he talks up until this point, right? So this is not spoilers or anything. Like, it very much implies that he thinks that he's better than Shannon. Like, he's, he, it's very haughty. It's very, like, and he doesn't really respect her boundaries and, um, yeah, things like that. And it's also, like, the, the, there's a, you know, the master-servant relationship that they have. And he abuses that. Like, he act he actively abuses that. Like, giving her orders and stuff. And it's when she's already uncomfortable and he's like, oh, but that's an order. It's just, it grinds my gears. I don't like it when people are like that. He, he thinks she's an idiot. And she's not. She's very smart. She's just awkward. Shannon's too good for him. So... That's my problem with George. For now. He, he, he might get better later, or might get worse later. I will not say. He might say the same. I will not say. No spoilers. Shannon's too good for him. Absolutely. He, he does say, to heck with the class system, and I respect that part of... of Hmm. Yeah, there's 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 a lot there. That's interesting. Um, yeah. Ava decided to leave for the time being. I don't know. I'm not in this window. There we go. When she climbed the stairs again, trying to leave the secret place, she saw a creepy, swaying human shadow blocking her path, and her dreamlike state was blown away. Who is it? For an instant, she believed that the true master of this room, the real Beatrice, had appeared. It seemed that the other person was also holding a gun. The two of them were pointing guns at each other, and eventually they each realized who the other was. But Rosa? Lisa, what are you doing in a place like this? That's my line. What business do you have in such a place? <sighs> I shouldn't have given you that hint, Nesan. If I hadn't, I definitely would have been the first to reach this place. Too bad. It seemed that Rosa knew where the staircase went. And what was waiting ahead of them. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, I was thinking about that during that scene. It's... That's also true, the age... the age difference. Oof. Which was more normal back in the 80s as far as I'm aware, but still... still... Sorry, 10 scene. Shouldn't interrupt... <laughs> myself. Um... You should talk. Even though I reached this place before you. I worry too much about the Sweetfish River. The sweet fish part didn't really matter that much at all, did it? That isn't true. It was an excellent hint, wasn't it? Well, of course. Maybe there was no need for it to be sweet fish. But when I heard that sweet fish are fish that go out into the sea, I was able to figure it out. What's inside? Why not see it with your own eyes? It definitely won't betray your expectations. Don't be afraid, Nason. I never had any interest in who becomes the head. I don't even care about the Ushinomiya family name. Honestly, I actually feel good about you stealing the headship from Kuro's Nisan. He was always swagger swaggering around because of it. Are you serious? Of course. I'm the outsider of the Ushinomiya siblings. Even if father had named me as the next head, there's no way Nisan would accept it. I try not to have such naive dreams. Hmm. Let me see too, Nesa. This proof of your victory. As long as I receive the proper portion that the siblings agreed upon, I plan to proactively acknowledge you as the true victor in this game. If you shoot me, then you'll have all this gold all to yourself, won't you? The same goes for you. If you shoot me, this gold will all be yours. 
can. This is actually really fucked up. For a tense moment, the sisters pointed their guns at each other. Eventually, after they sized up the glint in the other's eyes, they lowered their guns. Ava removed her finger from the trigger and held the gun upside down. It was a position that she couldn't quickly shoot from. When she saw that, Rosa held hers the same way. That's right. That plan of shooting each other, the other and having all the gold to ourselves is attractive for both of us. But if one of us suddenly disappeared on this island while it's isolated by the typhoon, there'd be a huge uproar. If we hid the corpse here, it probably wouldn't be found easily, but we couldn't be sure. No matter how many billion yen worth of gold is on the line, it isn't worth the risk of committing murder. Sorry, that line just fucking sent my soul out into the orbit. Jesus. On the contrary, that would give Kraus Nissan and the others ammunition to ring us for all our work. I agree. It may have been a blessing in the skies that you're the one who showed up. Instead of Nissan or Rudolph. You're the sibling I trust most. Thank you. And you're the sibling I trust most, Nissan. I want to see the gold too. Wanna have a peek? Now I feel like seeing it again too. Even though I saw it with my own eyes, it still doesn't feel real. Unless I see it together with you and confirm once more that it actually exists. It feels like the gold will turn to fog and disappear. Ava started descending the staircase once more. However, she didn't carelessly expose her back to Rosa. Even though at a glance it looked like Rosa had lowered her guard, she definitely didn't show any signs of carelessness. Then, they reached that room of the witch once more. Rosa also gasped, stunned speechless by the vast amount of gold. It's, yeah, it's it's really fucked up. All they're, they're all really fucked up, and this is why, part of why I hate Kinzo so much, is he did the fucking up. Like, all of this is a direct fallout of his behavior. And that, honestly, that's part of why this, this story is so interesting to me, because you see the effects that abuse, etc. has on gener generations of people, really. It carries over to the children. And in his case, it even came from his elders, you know? Like, yes, all everything is his fault, but he also... Like, something caused him to be like that. Hey Sophie, welcome to the... the stream. <laughs> yeah, uh... Ow 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 dropped a sub bomb and uh, it hit everyone. <laughs> um, I'm still playing the spooky game, just so you know. Or a spooky game, it's a different spooky game this time. I'll uh, drop a little qu content warning for you in here. Welcome, welcome, I hope you're having a good day. And uh, everything is Kinza's fault, but yeah, um, we're in episode arc three, like book three of eight, and we are four episodes, five episodes into arc three. So none of this is going to make any sense, and I, it's too long for me to summarize, <laughs> and I'm very sorry about that. But uh, all right, well, I hope you sleep well. And, uh, have a good night. Thank you for stopping by. I'm gonna go drink some water. Okay. Oh, okay, I think I just remembered which bit is up next. Um, I'm gonna tr- How long have we been going? Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna try to find a good 
topic point. Um, ideally not a cliffhanger. I lie, I'm gonna look for a cliffhanger, because of course I am. I'm very good at cliffhanger. Well, hey, I didn't write this, alright? <laughs> so thank you for plugging the YouTube. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, there should be one soon, but, um, yeah. Okay, wait, wait, wait. It's not the part that I thought would happen. I guess we'll find out together. Rosa and Ava walked absentmindedly through the rose garden. They had left the guest house secretly, so they had to be careful when they returned. It was time to snap to it and keep their guards up. Congratulations, Nason. Thank you. You decided it, didn't you, Nesan? 50% goes to the one bearing the title of successor to the headship. It certainly worked out well for you. Now that portion isn't Kraus Nesan's. So your share is now 50%, along with a quarter of the rest, for a total of 12.5 billion yen. Isn't that incredible? Two and a half billion is enough for me. Rudolf Nissan won't complain either. Kraus Nissan will probably be the only one to complain. Yeah, you're right. After all, Nissan is the de, de facto manager of Rokunjima. And since the gold was on these premises, even though I was the first to discover it, things might get complicated if I don't handle it cleverly. Please do not watch the anime. We're, we're, we're gonna do a watch party, remember? It's horrible. It'll be fun if we do it all together. Don't do it on your own. Don't go out there alone. It won't get complicated. Didn't we give it our all in that discussion last night with that in mind? I wonder if it will really go that smoothly. I've already completely gotten over my excitement. How we manage everything from here on is the real problem there is no anime. That's a problem for the new head of the Ujirumiya family. A problem for you to enjoy, Nesan. It has nothing to do with me. <laughs> That's some big talk coming from you. I'll support you as the second discoverer. If you'll at least give me the early payment we decided on. I'd like 150 million yen by March. Yes, that will be fine. If you support me, I'll graciously pay you that much. I'm not Nissan. Anyway, why don't we go and shock Nissan and the others? Even if we cover up the actual location, I want to see Kraus Nissan's shocked face as soon as I can. Wait a second, Rosa. Wait a while before telling everyone about it. Huh? Why? You idiot, isn't it obvious? This is that haughty cross Kraus Nissan we're talking about. And that sly Rudolf. Even if we do announce it eventually, it's certainly too early now. Unless we carefully investigate how to make our next move, it's possible that all the gold we finally found will be snatched away by Nissan. Ava thought she was saying something extremely natural. So when she saw Rosa's expression suddenly cloud over, she was a little surprised. What are you unsatisfied about? You know what kind of a person Kraus Nissan is. Nissan, that's against the rules. What do you mean? Didn't we make a rule that whoever found the gold would announce it immediately? If you hesitate, the foundation of the rules will be destroyed, and that could lead to something worse in the future. With Kraus Nissan as crafty as he is, 
that violation of the rules will come back to bite you. Don't be stupid. This is Nissan's Island, and that gold just now wasn't cash. We're talking about the liquidation of a vast 10-ton mountain, right? It will take a significant amount of time to carry it off and turn it into cash. And that will only work in Nissan's favor since he has practical control over this island. Don't you even realize that? I don't like it when you search out each other's weaknesses like that. All I want is to reach a clear decision regarding my two and a half billion portion. Of course, if you were to give me 2.5 billion in cash right now, you'd be free to continue negotiating however you like. But until I have my share in my own pocket, I will follow the siblings' rules. How can you be so naive? You don't understand Nissan's craftiness at all. It wasn't that Rosa didn't understand the craftiness of her older siblings. In that sense, Rosa more or less understood why Ava, Ava was being so cautious. But in her heart, she couldn't clear away her suspicion that Ava wanted to keep all of the gold to herself, because she knew that Ava was at least as crafty as her other siblings. In other words, Rosa wanted to put a stop to any chance Ava had to keep the gold all to herself by quickly informing the siblings of the gold's discovery. Rosa, sorry, but at least listen to me this once. Are you saying that if I don't listen to what you say, you won't be able to get me that 150 million? That isn't the way I wanted to say it. But if you really need that money, supporting me is a more realistic option. If you talk to Nissan and Rudolph, even the portion that's your natural right might disappear. You don't want that, do you? For a while, a severe expression that she'd never shown to her sister before rose to Rosa's face. There wasn't even a trace of her restraint as a younger sister. There was just the ruthlessness. No, the seriousness of a single human arguing about a vast sum of wealth. Ava made light of it, chuckling. My, my. How careless we must be to stand around here talking like this, even though a frightful murder case has just taken place, and the culprit might still be on this island. I'm sure it was just a servant's play acting. There were no murders on this island in the first place. The first place. Oh? So you do think that after all? The circumstances surrounding those six deaths shows us that clearly. A crime from the outside couldn't possibly have created those six closed rooms. Dr. Nanja said they were all dead, but that was a lie too. This is all a complicated act that Father cooked up. All of the servants are just playing dead. A murder never occurred in the first place. There's no way that there's a murderer prowling around. I'm surprised you noticed. You looked pretty scared, so I didn't think you'd figure out so much. I'm good at reading the mood of a situation. I've got you to thank for training me so well. That's right. Come to think of it now. Come to think of it now that the servants are dead. Almost everyone on this island is a member of the Ishidomiya family. As for Nanjo, he proclaimed the deaths of the servants, but when the relatives began to discuss the riddle of the epitaph, he disappeared off to the second floor as if he didn't want to get in the way. All of it was an act to try to get it to get us to try and solve that epitaph. And that's why you need to announce that you're the victor, Nason. Um, 
Lulu, I think your question's gonna get answered soon-ish. Uh, and Kinzo dies pretty late in episode two, if I recall. He's not one of the first six. There's no way that burnt corpse was really father. He got a corpse with the right number of tills from somewhere, and went to all the trouble of burning it in that creepy way of his so we could see it. I'm sure he's hiding somewhere, watching to see how we'll behave. I'll bet he already knows how you, he already knows you reached the Golden Land, Nesa. That's why you should announce that you're the winner soon. I'm sure Father will appear out of nowhere to applaud you and proclaim that you're his successor. And again, I've still got to pester you for that 150 million, so I can't stand against you in any way. So you listen to what I say and keep quiet about this to Nason and the rest? Make your position clear, Rosa. I want to tell them. We made that roll just last night. We shouldn't just throw it away. Of course, I will announce it in front of the siblings. However, I want to closely analyze the situation first. We've got to carry out ten tons of gold, convert it into money, and, dis and distribute it fairly. Until I have proof that I can do all that without Nissan getting in the way, I want some time to think. I only want to pos postpone my announcement until then. I'm certainly not keeping it secret because I want it all for myself. You'll definitely announce it to everyone, sooner or later, right? Yes, of course. Even I want to rub it in Nissan's face as soon as I can. About how much time will you need to think? I won't know that until I've thought about it. Will one night be enough? I can't promise you that it'll only take one night. Out of respect for you, successor, I'll support you for one night. This year's family conference will end tomorrow morning when the typhoon passes and the boat comes to get us. That's right. When the seagulls cry, I will remain silent until then. If you still feel that you need more time to think after that, then we'll cross that bridge when we get there, okay? I'll support your position. To the best of my ability. You really are cunning, aren't you? I'm surprised. Were you always this resilient? I guess it's true that women become stronger when they have a child. I realized that in myself when I had Maria. Understood. For the time being, thanks for your cooperation. We can talk about tomorrow when it comes. Yes, that's right. I'm convinced that you'll become a fair-minded successor to the headship. One who'd... Never even considered taking it all, taking all the gold for herself. Thank. Oh, uh, well, what the? Hot. Uh. Thank you. That's. I d <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so. T <laughs> Tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get to the. to the cliffhanger, and then we're gonna do another little hangout like last time, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. So, so much. Okay. No, you. You're awesome. Stop giving Jeff Bezos money. Please. 
He has too much. He doesn't need that much money. <laughs> and neither do I. I yeah, it is it, it is my own fault, but like why why I don't need anything. You don't need to donate anything to me at all. So ultimately still in you. But you Well, I appreciate it. I do. I'm gonna keep reading now. <laughs> oh boy. I'm convinced that you'll become a fair-minded successor to the headship, one who'd never even considered taking all of the gold for herself. No, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Isn't that obvious? I will split the gold evenly among the siblings. No way! I found it. Because I, because we, solved the riddle of the epitaph. So this gold is all mine. I won't give it up to anyone. I am the head of the Ishiromiya family. I am. I am. The witch inside Ava claimed exclusive possession in a loud voice. Of course, that didn't reach even close to Rosa's ears, and it probably didn't reach Ava's either. Indeed. I shall acknowledge it. You are the true head of the Ishiromiya family, chosen by the witch's epitaph. Now, I acknowledge it upon my name. You, you are... that outfit. You couldn't... actually be... Beatrice? Maybe Beatrice was happy that Ava had called her by her own name. She cackled cheerfully. And I'll, I'll consider it. It's... We can talk about that a bit. <laughs> In concert with that laugh, gold butterflies crept up as though a storm of gold dust was spinning around the room. And the room shone the color of gold. Indeed. I am the Golden Witch, Beatrice. <laughs> there is no need to be so frightened. I am praising your exploits. Truly excellent. Imagine that you would spectacularly solve that riddle of the epitaph. It is worthy of my admiration. You are the one who sent that letter? So, I'll inherit all of the gold and the Ushiromiya family headship, right? You wrote that in your letter. And I overcame that challenge. Indeed. I shall acknowledge it. Right now, all of the gold piled up here, and everything of the Ishiromiya family, is for you to do with as you please. After all, from this moment on, you are already the Ishiromiya family head. It, really? It's true, right? Right? Do not be agitated. I am openly praising you. As proof, I shall grant you this. Beatrice took a ring off of her own finger and held it out to Ava. She fearfully accepted it and realized that it was a ring. C could, could this be? Indeed. This golden ring is proof of the Ushiromiya family headship returned to me from Kinzo. From now on, it is yours. You may place it on your finger and hold it high before your siblings. No one should doubt that you have now succeeded the Ushiromiya family headship. Ava stared closely at the ring. It certainly wasn't a fake. Without a doubt, it was the real thing. She dreamed of receiving this ring someday focused on this day over and over again, and it was now finally a certainty. This ring had now designated her as the head, and had been handed over to her. And 
timidly. She put it on the middle finger of her left hand. In that instant, she felt a deep emotion welling up inside her that she'd never felt before. Her mind grew blank. Both eyes were opened. That ring was on her own finger. Not in a dream, but in reality. That ring is also pleased. After all, it managed to reach you, one who dreamed of putting it on their finger for so long. The ring. Father's ring. How many nights have you dreamed of putting that on your finger as you have done now? The strength of those feelings became your magic and materialized itself. Now you are worthy of calling yourself a great witch. Who are you? Are you really Beatrice? <laughs> I am the golden witch, Beatrice. That you should be a family alchemist. In accordance with my contract with Kinza, I will now pass everything on to you. All of the gold I entrusted Kinza with, and all of the wealth he built up through that, and the honor and headship of the Ushirmiya family. And I will pass on my power and the title of the Endless Witch. The title of the witch? I will pass on all of my magical power and the titles of the Golden Witch and the Endless Witch. Following my predecessor's example, I will hand over my name, Beatrice, along with that title. You may now call yourself by that name. Ava gulped. The chandelier light, which had seemed dim, now felt too bright. By my name, I shall now commence the succession of the Golden Witch. Give me one sec. It's not quite a cliffhanger. That's kind of a cliffhanger. But I'm gonna call it here. Oh, we'll find out how that happens next time. And, um... Uh, for now, just gonna bop us all over to my end screen. And, um... Wow, today was wild. Um... In, in in so many ways, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, whether you're in the chat or lurking or we're watching the VOD or you're on YouTube, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, thank you for the subs and the bits and the gifted subs and the, all of that, especially ow, 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 ow. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, again, we're going to do a little hangout after this, so I'm going to sign up for the, so that I can cut the VOD. And after that, I'll be back. And I'll drink some water in the meantime, I promise. But yes, all of you, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you again next time. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. Next time is going to be fucking adorable. Make sure you don't miss it. It's great. Uh, Lulu, I just saved but I will drink some water for you. So yes, thank you. As always, thank you for being here. Uh, I appreciate everything a lot. I'm just gonna pop the music back on. No, it's cool. Don't worry about it. Yeah, see you next time. And um... <laughs> see you next time, bye.